Hello everyone, welcome to The Rebound, episode two. Uh, I'm Connor Southwell. We're, we're looking ahead to Norwich City's championship season and um, I've got two guests with me who really need no introduction, but I'm going to give them one anyway. Joined by former Norwich City player, legend, uh, EDP columnist, which I'm, I'm told I'm contractually obliged to say, uh, Ewan <laughs> Roberts, and also Radio North commentator and EDP columnist, Chris Gorham. Uh, guys, how are we both? All good, Connor, good to see yeah, you. All good, mate, all good, thank you. Both keeping well. Yeah, so yeah, far, a bit of, yeah, I think bit of so. sunshine. Um, and I tell you what, we, we, you haven't got much time because the season will soon be upon us. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as we're recording this fixtures tomorrow, which is um, which is almost like the, the the start of a new season. Chris, I, I wanted to start with you really because, well, I guess you and could could um, come in on this as well. But usually, uh, in in normal times, we're probably well, just at the start of the season, but we'd certainly be preparing, preparing for pre-season normally. And I know Norwich City have released their pre-season schedule now, but it doesn't feel normal in terms of preparation, does it? It still feels a bit surreal, I guess. Yeah, it does. So it, ever since football came back, it, it hasn't felt quite right. And I'm not just saying that because you know Norwich's results after the, the, the lockdown were so poor and, and the performances were so poor as well. But we're in the middle of August and in, in this day of, of social media, you, you're always getting reminders of what we were doing this time last year and this time the year before. And you know, middle of August, you, you're usually well and truly into the season, aren't you? Yeah. You've, you've often had two or three games by now in the championship. So the fact we're still waiting... The fact we're still waiting even for the first pre-season friendly, it just shows that we're, as much as we like to pretend that football's back and, and everything's back to normal, it's far, far from it. And it, it, let's face it, it won't be normal again until those fans are allowed back inside the ground. We, we can talk about football as much as we like, but it, it's still not going to be the same until all of our friends, all of the, the great people we're used to seeing at matches uh, are allowed to go along again. I know we were fortunate enough, if you want to say that, Ewan as well, to, to go to some of the games. Ewan not so much involving Norwich City, but some of the games uh, during that, that period when we had Project Restart. And it, it was a very surreal experience. And I was hoping that a new season might be a bit of a new start and, and fans back in. But that, that's not going to be the case in, in the short term, which is a, a real shame. But of course, we can all understand why. Yeah, I think I think for me, going to games behind closed doors, and you, and I don't know if you're the same, but it, it kind of feels more, and of course we're incredibly privileged to be allowed let, to, to be in stadiums, but it does kind of feel more like my job as opposed to perhaps usual football matches where, where it felt like, I don't know, maybe there's a bit more enjoyment there. Yeah, I mean, I, I covered, what did I do, 13 games, um, including the, uh, the playoffs with Cardiff and Swansea. Um, so I, I got to... Uh, Sample quite quite a lot of of what was going on. It was strange. It was totally different to what we used to. The way we go into a stadium, um, you're limited to where you can have access. You know, you, you, you normally you go into the press room, you have a bit of food, you, 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 you catch up with people. But there was none of that. You straight into the into the press box, and you couldn't leave that area and, until the game finished. Um, the games itself. I was surprised at, 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 the, at the standard, the competitiveness of, of those games, because it can't be easy for the players to, to walk out to an empty stadium, no atmosphere, no noise. Um, but all credit to, to all the teams, to be fair, they, they went at it. Um, and, and, and they made those games very enjoyable to watch. I, th I thought it took a little bit of time, took maybe two or three games to, 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 to get started, to kick off, get their fitness levels to where you would, would expect them to be after you know, three months of, of, of not kicking a ball. Um, but as Chris said, sadly, with everything that's happened in the past six months, it is the only way for, for the foreseeable future, definitely, that we're, we're going to have any type of, of competitive sport to, uh, to enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chris, I'll, I'll come to you then. We've obviously had the, the first fixture confirmed uh, today, as we recall this, which is Thursday, which is the uh, EFL Cup game, Carabao Cup game against Luton Town. It's uh, Saturday the 5th of September, which has perhaps caught us all by surprise a little bit because it's obviously in the middle of an international week and Norwich could have up to 15 players missing, which seems absolutely crazy. Well, it does, uh, until you consider that it, it felt like that was the case for most of their Premier League games, their injuries, 15 players missing. It's just it's what we're used to, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'd be interested to... I haven't heard a full explanation from the club yet, but I assume it must be to do with, once the season gets going again, just how packed the schedule is going to be. Because the fact that we're still having a, a League Cup this year, we've still got the FA Cup, we've got all the usual fixtures to fit in, and yet we're starting you know, a, a good month later than we usually do. So when you look at... Norwich City playing that game on an alternative date 
Well, if they were to play it any later, you, you're right in the meat of the season, and they can't play it any earlier because, as we found out yesterday, they're going to be in Germany for a for, for a, a pre-season uh, three-match tour. So, I think it's, I imagine it's probably the only thing they can do. They've looked at the alternatives, and, and none of them are workable. So it will probably feel more like a pre-season friendly than it will the first round of the League Cup. But of course, a lot of those players who are on international duty, looking at the way Norwich and other teams approach the first round of the League Cup, it's not too controversial to say probably a lot of those wouldn't have played in that game anyway. And and around the time that we were watching No City at Kenilworth Road, you and you'll be watching Timu Puki face Wales, aren't you? I will. Um, We've got two (laughs) Nations League games coming up, one away in Helsinki in Finland, which obviously we won't be travelling to. We'll be be doing it off off camera in Cardiff. So, yeah, an opportunity to see see how Timu's shaping up before before the big start, before the big kick-off in, I think, the very important season for for, for Timu after he not just finished the season, but the second half of, of the season for him um, and then we've got Bulgaria on on the 6th of September so yeah straight back into it right let's um let's delve into perhaps what I want to talk a, a little bit about today which is which is all really around how Norwich City changed the mentality and, and have success in the championship um you and I'm, I'm going to come to you first as a former professional how difficult is it after a relegation or, or perhaps a difficult season where you've lost quite a few matches to then change your mentality back into a winning one we, we it's quite cliche isn't it I guess but how difficult is it in in reality I mean I can I can think back in my second season at Leicester we'd, we'd won promotion to the Premier League in my first season um, we were relegated along with Norwich and Ipswich that I think it was 94 95 that 95 94 season um, but the difference was you had nearly two months to get over the disappointment of of that relegation, um, and but then it, the dressing room in Leicester was was a really really good one, one of the best I've I've ever been. We had some proper good lads in there, um, and we couldn't wait. We couldn't wait to get back to pre season, you know, to, to to get back on the training field to to work hard in that six seven weeks period of pre season to get our fitness levels where where they wanted to be. And we were determined to to put the wrongs of the previous season right in in this up and coming one. We'd got the disappointment out of our out of our system. We we had that togetherness, um, that team spirit that we had the previous season to get promoted, um, and, and we were we were confident that we were we were good enough to do that. And uh, you know we, we had some really good experienced professionals in that dressing room, and and that following season, you know. We uh, we won the playoff final against Crystal Palace to once again reach the Premier League and, and hopefully you know Norwich can can do the same even though the the amount of time to get that to, and and it's a horrible feeling Connor when when you've you've failed you've you've not let people down that's that's wrong you've 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 been relegated uh, a lot of bad things a lot of negative things have been said about the the, the squad the, the manager the, the the football club. And, and you just want to prove people wrong, you know, and that's all you can do. And you've got to fully focus on that. And, and, I, th- and I think physically, the boys will, the, the lads will be, will be up for the challenge. I think the biggest thing for me is mentally, you know, and, and as Chris alluded to, uh, a 46 game championship season is a long slog in a natural season, but now it's cut down to nine months. It's, it's going to be even harder with, with more games to play. You know, are they going to be mentally ready for that? What we have seen, Chris, so far this this summer, what, nine summer signings as, as we sit here, um, with two months of the window left, which which seems absolute madness to be honest. But what, what we have seen is Norwich really sort of invest in their squad to an extent. Is that going to be key to changing the mentality? A lot of fresh faces. Do you think you perhaps don't have the hangover of last season? I think it it did need it. I think we we certainly got that feeling in the, the post lockdown period that there were certain players whose time with Norwich City was was perhaps at an end, and and you knew you weren't going to see them again. You know, Moritz Leitner, we we didn't see in the Premier League beyond October, so it, it was clear that it, it did need refreshing. I think we've seen that before. I remember Norwich City getting relegated out of the, the Premier League under Nigel Worthington, going down with players like Darren Huckabee, with Dean Ashton, with Robert Green, still in the squad. And we thought, well, this will be no problem. We'll bounce back. But if you don't get that first summer right when you drop out of the Premier League, it, it, it's difficult. And Ewan covers Swansea and Cardiff most weeks, to two teams who've, who've gone down and not got back at the first time of asking. And it, it shows how, how difficult it is. So I do think a certain churn of players, a, a bit of a refreshing of the squad is, is really important when you get relegated, especially because 
you know, let's not be under any illusions here. So many players have come in at the minute. It's a it's a massive squad. We're getting towards Barry Fry when he was the Birmingham manager territory, aren't we? With, with all the players. So that, clearly, some players are going to leave at some point. And I think the season starts so early. So to get some new players in, so that you can cope with losing players when that happens, you you've got to be ready for it, haven't you? So I, it, it makes sense that they've done the business early. But clearly, there there are going to be other comings and, and possibly more goings between now and, and when that transfer window closes. Yeah, we, we've we've seen the relegated clubs take different approaches, haven't we? I mean, Bournemouth and, and Watford both dispensed to their managers, albeit Watford did it before they got relegated. Norwich City have stuck with Daniel Farker and perhaps decided to change the core of the squad rather than the manager. Uh, you and, as, as Chris said there, you, you cover Swansea and, and Cardiff, two teams who, um, although they finished in the playoffs and Swansea have been down a year, haven't they? But certainly in Cardiff's first attempt, it failed to get back up. It's a really difficult league to get out of. It is. I'm still laughing at, the, at Chris's Barry Fry comment. <laughs> and I remember those days really well. He had nearly 60 players in his squad. Yeah, um, yeah he used then. to sign he, everybody, didn't he? He was signing anything that moved. <laughs> I bet you were a bit disappointed you didn't get the call, weren't you? you didn't get else. <laughs> but what, what am I doing wrong? Um, I, I, I think you, you need a good, healthy squad, um, strength in depth to get out of this division. It, it is, in my opinion, I mean, I only had one season in the Premier League. It is the most competitive league in, in the world. I think you only have to, to see results towards the end of the season uh, with what happened to Brentford. You know, they only needed three points and, and they lost at Stoke. They, they lost at home to Barnsley, uh, which sort of meant they, they had to go through the, the, the playoff route, which, which they failed. Um, and it is, it's relentless. It's, it's Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Saturday, Tuesday. Um, there's a lot of games. You have to be ready for that. It's completely different to, to the Premier League. Um, the, the focus that, and everything that goes with the Premier League, uh, there's cameras everywhere, you can't do anything. That, that's not quite the case in, in the Championship. And maybe that will, will not suit the lads better, but that will make them more at ease, uh, make them play with a little bit of, of less fear, I, 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 I think. And, and, I, and I, think, I look at the teams that have, have come down, you know, Bournemouth, Watford, uh, I think they had five years in the Premier League um, before being relegated. So not many of their players would have, would have sort of sampled and, and, and had a championship season under their belt. There'll, there'll be one or two players there that obviously will. Whereas it's completely different for Norwich. They've got, they've got a, a squad full of players who won the title a couple of years ago. I mean, I, I, look, I looked earlier at the team that played the last game of that 2018-19 season at Aston Villa. And every single one of those players uh, are still at the club. So I think strength and depth won't be a problem. Um, it's a big case will be whether players will want to still be at the club. Because obviously there's been a lot of talk about players leaving and, 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 and one thing or another. Um, do they want to stay and help help Norwich City get back into, into the Premier League at the first time of asking. You know, hopefully, hopefully um, they all will. Um, and and if, if they do, if, if every single player that's there now is there at the beginning of the season, I, I do firmly believe that Norwich have to be one of the favourites for, for one of the top two spots in the Championship. Yeah, it's that mentality, isn't it, you? And I think you've got to, the players have got to realise straight away, and I, this sounds horrible, I don't mean it like this, but they've got to realise that they're, they're not Premier League players anymore. Mm. And any team that drops out of the Premier League and feels a bit sorry for itself and thinks that, oh, well, we should be in the Premier League, yeah. those are the teams that tend to get rolled over by the, the sort of relentless physical nature of the, of the Championship. So a lot of these players have now had a crack at the Premier League. They've seen what it's all about, and they'd love to get back there. And I'm sure many of them will, but... For now, they're not. They're in the championship because that's where they deserve to be because the way results have gone and you've got to come to terms with that and roll your sleeves up and get on with it, haven't you? So you, you can't be feeling sorry for yourself after what's happened last season because, as we've seen, you make a poor start in the championship and it can very quickly become a very long, very hard mm. season, can't it? Yeah, absolutely. You and I was, I was, I was going to just pick up on your, on your point there, but, but equally something you said at the start, which is togetherness, which I think is such an important word for the championship. You'll know you've, you've played a lot of games. Have you, I'm not obviously asking you to name names, but if you've been in a dressing room where you can tell a certain player perhaps isn't up for it or believes they're probably slightly above the level, is, is that very difficult as a squad to, to create that togetherness, to create that sort of environment that you need to, to mount a, a promotion push? Um, it, it doesn't happen overnight, I have to say, because especially now, because you've got players from 
all four corners of the world in, in the squad. I mean, back, I, I was pointing out the squad that I, I was involved in at Leicester. Um, we were Welsh, Scottish, English. Um, I think we had a, a Swedish lad in there. Um, and not too many other, other foreign players, because that's how football was back in, in the mid-90s. There wasn't a lot of um, foreign influence in, in, in the Championship especially, but uh, you, you had a few in the Premier League, obviously. Um, and as I say, it doesn't happen overnight. You can't have little clicks. And I, and I have to say, when I, when I first signed for, for, for Norwich back in 97, that was the first thing that I did notice as, as I walked into the, 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 the changing room of McConley. There were little pockets of clicks in, in different corners of that changing room. And I wouldn't say it was as tight-knit as what you would hope it to be. Um, but the, the lads have just got to think back to to the fun, and I think that's the big thing. They've got to get back to enjoying themselves, you know, enjoying playing, enjoying showing how, what good players that they are. You know, you look back at that, the, the, the season where, what, 94 points, 93 goals, cruised to the, champ, to the championship title. I think they, could, they can do that again. And, and they had the spirit back then. They had that togetherness that, that is so important. They, they will go on a, a, a short pre-season tour to Germany and, and, and you can start sort of getting the little buds, if you like, of that togetherness on, on those sorts of trips. Um, because as Chris alluded to, they have to start the season running. You know, when you've lost 11, 11 games on the spin, including that cup defeat to Manchester United, you don't want to go three or four or five at the start of the season, waiting for that first win. Because that then does bring pressure. That brings pressure on the manager, most definitely. Um, I'm delighted that, that he's still going to be um, at the club. I, I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed to bits that he's going to be given the chance to, to get the club back in the Premier League. I think he deserves that. Um, and, and looking at the players that they've brought in, they've gone back to, I think, what they were 18 months, two years ago, like finding little gems, hopefully, in and around Europe. I really like the look of, of Kieran Donnelly. Um, heard so many good things about him. So I think that the squad is, is in a good place. But, I mean, it's all about the start for me. You know, if, if they... And we'll know tomorrow with the fixtures. Uh, really looking forward to tomorrow morning. I think it's nine o'clock, the, the fixtures come out. Um, can't wait to see what, what the first few games are. Uh, because it's so important, so important that you get off to a, to a, a winning and a good start. Chris, yeah, you, like myself, like you and as, as well, have, have seen plenty of Norwich City Championship campaigns, some good ones, some not so good ones um, that perhaps have, have resulted in, in, in difficult times. Daniel Farkas' first year, probably a good example of that. Equally, Alex Neal's last season, um, off the top of my head, that, that one obviously under Nigel Worthington as well, if, if you want to roll back even further. Um, how do Norwich City, I guess, change their mentality from walking out at Old Trafford or, or the Etihad on the final day to potentially going to, to Wickham Wanderers or Rotherham? Because that, that can be a culture shock for some players, can't it? Yeah, it can. And um, I remember when they dropped out of the, the Premier League under Alex Neal, a, a player who, who really seemed to struggle to begin with was Tim Closer. And I think people like him who are still around the club are going to be so important because I remember very early on in that season, he, he had a really difficult time trying to mark Daryl Murphy. And I think it was one of his last games for Ipswich. And, you know, Tim Closer had come over to, to England to play in the Premier League yeah, for Norwich City and within a few months was, was in the Championship. And it took him a while. And I think I'm right in saying that by the sort of autumn winter time, he was out of the first team. And I remember seeing him play in what was then the Johnston's Paint Trophy for Norwich's under-23s. So he was that far out of the reckoning because he wasn't doing the job. But he knuckled down. He, he got to grips with it. And, and over the years became a you know, really important player in the Championship for Norwich City. And he is, is going to have to go through all of that again now. And assuming he stays with the club, pass on that experience to some of the players who, who are doing this for the first time, going through the cycle of being a, a relegated team, not being the underdogs every week, being the team that, that everybody wants to beat every week, suddenly being one of, the, one of the bigger teams in the division. I think we've talked about Luton Town, who, who Norwich are playing in, in the Cup, and I think that that first fixture of the new season it encapsulates where Norwich are. You've got two teams there who are both in the Championship. You've got Luton, who've spent the last 
couple of weeks and a couple of months celebrating the fact that they're in the championship because they're delighted to have stayed up. You've got Norwich who are also in the championship who have, have been gutted for the last two months because they're, they're in the championship. So, you know, the mentality, Ewan's mentioned it, it's absolutely crucial over those first few games. And you've got Tetty there, players like that who've been through this before. And I think that the words that they give the players off the pitch, that the advice that they're passing on in the dressing room, that's going to be almost as important as what happens on the pitch in those opening few weeks. Agreed. And, and, and Chris, I was, I was going to come back to you again. You, you make the point there in terms of the expectation. And even though we're, we're probably not likely to see certainly a full Carrow Road for, for a while, those fans are going to have the expectations that Norwich City certainly challenge for promotion, but certainly finish in the top six. That's quite a shift from where they were in that title winning season where there was no expectation on Daniel Farker, his squad, Stuart Webber, the recruitment, etc. Yeah, and even last season, you know, they only got 21 points in, in the whole season in the Premier League, which is a, a really poor return. And I don't think too many of us were that surprised that they went down. But I think we all were disappointed they didn't come closer to staying up. We, we all thought there was much more potential in the squad than, than we saw, particularly in the spell of games after lockdown. But it was a bit of a free hit that they had so much goodwill in the bank from having got promoted unexpectedly the year before that... Daniel Farker didn't come under the sort of pressure that a, a manager who's only taken 21 points usually would. He's not going to have that luxury this season. We've heard Stuart Webber say many times before that the, the, the task that he set himself and the club has set itself is to establish themselves as one of the top 25 teams in the country. They've said that time and time again. And of course, when you're in the Premier League, you always are in that position. That's not assured in the Championship. So as soon as they drop even out of the top five and certainly out of the playoff positions, then this season by everybody's standards that they're, they're not imp they're not performing well enough so it's a it's a different kind of pressure this season that the players will have to get their heads around and and get around it quickly yeah you and I'll, I'll come to you you had what nearly a, a 150 games in the championship or, or the first division and what, what you'll know more than most I guess what does it take to be successful in in that league what do you need to have what set of components do you need to have to to be successful um do you know what? A bit of everything. Um, I mean, there's no, no magic wand. There's no remedy that otherwise, you know, everybody would, would be winning promotion. It's, it's what, what do you need? <sighs> Obviously you need talents. That's that. I think that's, I think you need a, a good work ethic. You need, um, belief and you need a good squad. I, I you, you I look at last season, I thought you were very unlucky with, with injuries, um, especially at the start of the season defensively with, with one, one defender being ruled out for months and then the next one. So obviously that, that didn't help the cause last year. So you, you, do, need, um, you do need a little, back, little bit of luck with, with staying clear of, of those types of long-term injuries. Um, Defence, I, I look at Wolves when they won promotion. Um, Two three years ago, best best defensive record in the championship. Had conceded forty goals in in their forty six games. Um, Sheffield when they went up second behind Norwich. I mean Norwich when the year that uh, two years ago, I think they had the seventh best defensive record in the championship. But when you're scoring ninety three goals, you can get away with it. Leeds Leeds this year best defensive record. So looking at that side of the game from a Norwich point of view, that has to improve. I mean, that had to improve last year because defensively in the Championship, they, they conceded too many goals for the team that finished top of the division. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that they've got the defenders there. I think Grant Hanley, I think even Tim Closer will, will, will add to, to, to that back four. Um, you've got Zimmerman as well, who showed how classy he is in, in the Championship in, in a back four. So... And it's not you're not going to come up against the standard of centre forward and the standard of teams that, that the club did last season in the Premier League, um, and they've got to just get back into those good habits, Connor. Because time and time again, last year, conceding sloppy goals and and that lack of belief when they've conceded the first goal that they haven't got enough to get back into the game. They've got to believe that that that, that they're more than capable of 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 winning promotion in the top two, winning the league once again. Um, because and, and Chris was spot on with with you know he mentioned Tim Closer. I, I'll throw a Tim Tim Cruel in there. I'll throw Grant Hanley in there. Alex Tetty, you know Timu Puki. You look at that the spine of what could be that side. It's a good spine. 
and, and you've got really good, experienced professionals there who can help those, those young players mature and, and take the club to, to the next level. Um, it's, it's a hard one to say at the minute because obviously we've got well over a month or nearly just over uh, less than two months of the transfer window to go. So it, it's a hard one to, to judge and, and to speak about until you know what a manager has got to work with. Uh, but at the minute, with, with, with the squad that, that, that they've got, then if they can get back to those winning habits and that, and that winning mentality that they did um, a couple of, year, couple of years ago, then I'd be disappointed if they didn't, didn't finish top two, I have to say. Mm. Chris, how, how important is, is the improvement defensively? I mean, we all saw in the Premier League how many goals they conceded, set pieces as well. I know supporters were, were particularly sort of disgruntled at. Ewan was, was part of the Nigel Worthington side that were very defensively solid in the Championship the year they, they got promotion. How important is it that Norwich rectify that? Because we talk individually about the defenders being probably excellent for the Championship. I mean, Max Ahrens and Jamal Lewis, for example, if they remain at the club, were, were in the Championship team of the year, weren't they, as fullbacks? So we all know the quality. Is it about the individuals or more about the structure for you that Norwich City need to improve? I think it is a bit of both. I think, you know, when you're, you're giving away the same sort of goal time and time again and, and, and set pieces is, is always a good example. I think set pieces is, is probably a, the most the raw example you can get of, of, of how good some of the, the coaching or, or how successful some of the coaching is in terms of getting the message across to the players because you know the ball's not moving you know where the ball's going to come from it's the, the same thing every time the ball gets delivered into the box it's also a good test of the players and, and how committed they are to get to the ball first whether it's zonal marking whether it's man to man it all comes down to, to players getting to the ball first and if we go into another season where Norwich concede lots of goals from set pieces. I think yeah, there'll, there'll be disappointment and there'll be questions asked. You would like to think that it wouldn't hurt them as much in the Championship as the Premier League because with the players that they've got, you, you would back them to actually be able to come from behind in games, which they couldn't do in the Premier League. But, but yeah, it's one area of, of the way Norwich City have been over the last couple of years where you know, clearly improvement is needed. And I think that's, maybe that's something that supporters have been a little bit surprised about that with all the new signings we haven't seen that much in terms of you know, central defensive reinforcements come in. There's a lot of belief in players like Zimmerman, Hanley, Tim Closer, Ben Godfrey if he stays as individuals. So that's great, but they've got to perform better in all sorts of ways when they are out on the pitch. You and have you ever encountered zonal marking? Is it something that, that oh, you've used in a team? Is it something yeah, that you're a fan yeah. of? Uh, kind of? I've conceded goals from zonal marking. I've conceded goals when it's man-to-man. It is a hard one to judge because... Especially this day and age, a lot of managers use that zonal marking. I'm not a big fan. I have to say, I'm, I'd rather, I'd rather, your 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 main headers of a ball pick up the opposition's big men, if you like. You know, I, I nine times out of, out of ten, I I would always go back for to to defend a corner or, or a free kick, and I would pick up the centre half that I was playing against, and then if 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 he gets a run on me and, and loses me in the box and he scores, you know, I, I hold my hand up, it's my fault. Zonal marking, you can't really pinpoint the finger of blame at anybody. Um, I, I'm not a big fan. I, I, I really am not. Because with zonal marking, you tend to get your, your main headers of a ball on the edge of the six-yard box. And I just think you're, you're asking for trouble. Um, it is horses for courses. A lot of coaches are using the zonal marking system now. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit old school, mate. A, bit, a little bit old fashioned, if you like. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. There's, there's nothing wrong with old fashioned, is there? Not, not at all. Um, not by that. Looking at that shirt, there's not. No. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm only joking, mate. I'm only joking. Fashion, I think they call that fashion. <laughs> Chris, I, I, I come to you. I'm sure set pieces will be, will be really high up on the list of things that Norwich City fans want to see. Daniel Farker, I guess, and Norwich City improve upon. What else would you put up there in, in terms of areas that Norwich City need to um, improve if, if they are to uh, go on and have the campaign that many supporters hope and, and wish for them to have? I think one of the more alarming things in, in the Premier League was how they, they were they were beaten so often physically, weren't they? And, and the most obvious representation of that was from things like set pieces, where one of the reasons Daniel Farker says he's, he, he doesn't do man-to-man marking is that he thinks that by, even by doing that, you know, 
players te- or teams tend to have so many more taller players than, than Norwich have over the years. So he doesn't think that would work um, either. So that's one thing you want to see them competing a little bit more physically, particularly if they, they're getting ready to, 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 to return to the Premier League. If, if part of this is being a Premier League team in two years' time, well, they're going to need to come back a, a stronger team in, in more ways than one. I think for me that the biggest disappointment last season, you know, some of those defensive shortcomings weren't a huge surprise. And you know, it does happen in the Premier League. You are going to get games where you can see plenty of goals in the Premier League. The biggest disappointment for me after the opening couple of months of last season was the lack of goals. I think they, what, they only scored about seven away from home in the whole season, didn't they? That's a world um, record. Oh, we we it's, thought it's, it's... that even if Norwich conceded goals in the Premier League, yeah... It is, yeah, for away goals. They, yeah, they really away goals. That, that famous derby team, weren't they? It's, it's, not, it's, it's not a world uh, record, it's a Premier League record. I think it's not a world record. <laughs> 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 well, you, know, you have to take your records where you can when you're a Norwich fan. But yeah, I think, I, I, I think, I think for me that, was the, that probably was the biggest disappointment, yeah. actually, yeah. in the latter part of last season, that for all the attacking talent they had, and we knew we might concede goals, but we thought we'd cause more problems yeah, for teams. Yeah, percent And we didn't, yeah. And I think that's going to be a big thing. A couple more attacking players have come in. Um, Kieran Dow's exciting, there's no doubt about that. If Pookie stays, which we all hope he does, can he you know, find that goal-scoring touch again? I just want to see Norwich City as the proper, effective, cohesive attacking force again. Because I, I really, really miss that, certainly after the lockdown, when they, they barely scored a goal at all. Yeah, I agree with you. And that, that probably leads me to the natural follow-up for you as a, a, a former striker. Timu Puki, I guess, is, is probably the, the main one. But how did Norwich City go back to scoring goals? How does Timu Puki go back to scoring goals after such a, a, a long sort of drought, I guess, w- without one? Well, he, he's got to keep going in the right areas in, in that box. Um, and I can remember when I was having good times on the pitch when the goals seemed to be coming, flowing in. Um, and the game's easy then, Connor. You know, your confidence is high. You're going out there expecting to score. It's, it's when things get hard, things aren't quite going your way, you're missing the odd chance, you're in a bit of a drought. How do you overcome that? You know, you've still got to, still got to work hard for the team. Um, team who's still got to put himself in, the, in those right positions. You know, you can't hide, you can't not go into those positions just in case the ball falls to you and, and you miss. Now, if you miss four or five, the next one, you've got to make sure you're there again to, to put it away. Um, and, and Norwich need the team Upuki of definitely the, the, the first six, seven weeks of last season where he got off to an unbelievable start uh, with five goals in his first four games. Uh, but, you know, the championship winning season, you know, 29 goals in the league. It, it was a career high for him. Uh, everything he touched turned into gold. He's... And it, not just his Norwich form. I think he got 10 goals in 10 games for Finland in the European qualifying campaign. That's a magnificent tally. That's why, that's why you know, everybody was, was, was raving about him, and, and, and rightly so. He's got to get back to, uh, to that team with Puki because he'll get chances with the players around him, the players in that squad, they will create chances. Um, and, and I totally agree with, with Chris. At, at, the la- at the start of last season, my main concern was defensively because of, of the goals conceded the previous year. I have no, no doubt that they would score goals as they did in those first few games. Never, never for the life of me did I, did I think they would score 26 Premier League goals in 38 games. I mean, had you, had you told me that at the start of the season, I'd have been ringing up for someone to take you away because I just would not <laughs> have believed you with, with the quality that, that, that Norwich had in, in attacking areas. Uh, He's just got to get back to enjoying himself again. He didn't look, he didn't look himself after the restart, I have to say. His, his shoulders were a bit slumped. His head seemed to be down. He, dare I say, he didn't look as if he, he wanted to be here. I, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, you read one or two things and you hear different things about family life and maybe they're not as settled as, as they should be. And I hope they, those weren't, weren't, weren't true. Uh, because... He's, he's, an, he's an absolute talent, and uh, as, as we all know, to, to get someone of his quality, his goal-scoring ability, you've got to pay millions. And, and, and talking about centre-forwards, I'll be really looking forward to seeing young Adam Ida uh, in the Championship. He's obviously he scored that hat-trick up at Deepdale uh, in, in the FA Cup. Didn't have as much time 
as I'm sure he would have liked um, in, in, in the Premier League. But his time will come and, and maybe it'll come this season. So he's got to be ready for it as well. And, and just in terms of the attacking side of it and how that went away, I, I remember the game probably around this time last year, actually, against Chelsea, where, where Norwich lost 3-2. And OK, they lost the game, but the way they, they attacked Chelsea and they looked like they were going to score goals. And if you compare that to sort of the end of the season, that, that certainly didn't look the case at all. Chris, I'm, I'm sure you and will will want to comment on this as well but in terms of Timu Puki how difficult is it when you know the team are so reliant you're not just your 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 club team as well but also your national team and I guess an element of the season for him and, and such a big part of it was the Euros and that obviously got taken yeah. away didn't it and that was what he was working mm. towards yeah well I, th- I think Ewan's better place than me to talk about what it's like when the team's relying on you to score all the goals because <laughs> that, that was him for Norwich City for, for so many years wasn't it uh, at, a t- at a time when maybe things weren't weren't going that well he was the, the man we always looked to and 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 yeah no doubt he was carrying Norwich City goal scoring wise he was carrying his, his country as well and and I'm sure that expectation in some ways you thrive on it because you want to be in that position if you're a striker that people you know expect to score goals then it shows you're doing something right but you're going to go through patches as a striker where you're not scoring three and four goals every week and then you need other players to weigh in and you know Pookie was still the top scorer last season I was just disappointed that other than Todd Campwell you know nobody else that delivered with the sort of goals that we thought they would I thought you know Emi Buendia such a talented player, a real creator. But the fact we had to wait until that Watford game. I don't think we might have lost Chris there. I think his wife. I think he's run out of Wi-Fi. Okay. <laughs> I think he has. Yeah, uh, we'll try desperately to... There we go. He's, think... he's back, he's back. Am I back? He's got Chris back. Sorry there about we that, go. Mate, back. <laughs> put, put another 50p in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just saying. I think yeah, they, the other players didn't score enough goals. Yeah. It wasn't just Pookie's fault. Mm. You and what, what's that like when when a team is so dependent on you for goals as a as a player? Is it is it difficult mentally for for you? I mean, it, I guess at times if you're in a rich vein of form and you're scoring lots of goals, it's the best thing in the world. But on yeah. the flip side of that, when you're not, it's really difficult. I was paid to score goals. Um, whether whether the club were dependent on me or not. I went out there every game, obviously wanting to score. Um, I, 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 in my time at Norwich, I didn't, even, I, I didn't think, I never went out there with the pressure of, or oh, if I don't score today, we're, we're in trouble. I, that that thought never ever entered my mind. In, in do you think it has for, for Timu then? Do you think oh, that's a thought that's that has for Timu last season, but in in particular? Um, possibly it has. Possibly it has. You know, we spoke about that great start that he had. Um, um, especially at home, because I only went to three three home games last season: um, Newcastle, Man City, and Liverpool. So three good games, to be fair. You know, three games, um, two great wins against, and we all remember. And, and that's what the lads have got to think. They've got to. If I was Daniel Farker over this preseason, I'd just be playing that Man City DVD and, and just showing all the good things that they did. They, they outplayed Man City at, at their game. They showed how composed they 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 can be when when they're under pressure when they're being closed down, you know. Just re, rerun after rerun after rerun. Just show them how good they were that day, you know. And it was a poor season, but you know, one massive positive is that is a game that we will remember for a very very long time. So it wasn't all doom and gloom, um, and hopefully, hopefully, in in this upcoming season. We'll, we'll see more of those performances. Mm. Chris, is it, is it just a case that they need to find the enjoyment, the fun, I guess, that they had two years ago in the Championship? And look, togetherness is, is going to be very difficult with, with the, the, the squad and, and how that sort of churned, I guess, the churn to the squad. But how do they go back to finding that enjoyment and, and, and that fun, I guess? Because it, it feels like that was lost in, in the Premier League. They were quite a fun team to watch in the Championship and, and equally in, at the start of the Premier League. And that just seemed to evaporate, I guess. I think it just shows how it, it's all results driven, isn't it? If, if Norwich City are winning games and they're, they're on decent runs next season, it's much easier to have that, that feel-good factor, that, that togetherness. We, we, we knew Norwich would lose games in the Premier League. We, we all went in 
to the season mentally prepared for that. But when it happens and when you start seeing your team lose week after week and probably when you're playing in a team that, that's losing a lot more than it's winning, it's much harder to keep going. And I, I, I don't think it's any surprise that some of the enjoyment disappears, even when you are playing against some of the best players in the world. You know, losing a lot is not a nice feeling. And, and they've just got to make sure that doesn't happen in the championship. It, it, the results are going to be key. That's the only thing that's going to turn around the, the mood with the fans and, and probably with the squad as well. Agreed. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about recruitment, Chris. Are you surprised at some of the deals they've done? It, it seems to me like it's it's shifted a little bit. We've still had the the obscure. I mean, Puetta's one, uh, Sorensen, another two of those almost obscure Norwich City signings that we've become so familiar with over the last couple of years. But equally, Kieran Dow, uh, Jordan Hugill, rumoured. Who, who I'm going to come to you in about in in a, in a little while. But it just feels like maybe the profile of player has shifted a little bit. That they're looking for. I mean, Daniel Farker himself said that they wanted a bit more championship experience. Uh, yeah, and they've got themselves in a position financially where, where they can do that as well. You know, one of the reasons they were having to look for gems and, and free transfers in years gone by is because you know, financially that's the position they were in. They have now had a year in the Premier League. We know that they've been, been very clear on saying they don't have to sell players. They've already seen off Liverpool's interest in Jamal Lewis. So they have got a bit more financial freedom. So that's probably part of it. But I think it is, for some of the reasons we've mentioned already, it's a squad that, that is lacking a little bit of championship know-how. And certainly with Dow coming in, who's been playing for the last few years in the championship, that he's got that. Hugo would be another great example of a player who is not going to be overawed by the 46-game season because he's, he's been there and done it so many times already. So, yeah, it, it makes sense. So on paper, we've said this in pre-seasons before, on paper, you look at the signings and a lot of them make complete sense. But how they all knit together, how quickly they settle, whether they hit the ground running. You just never know, do you? We, we've had so many players who've come in and we thought were going to be great and haven't been. And then we've had so many other players over the years who've, who've surprised us for other reasons as well. So it's impossible to say from here how many of these are going to be successes. But on paper, you can see what they're trying to do with, with most of the signings. Yeah, it feels like they're trying to get a bit more of a blend this year. So it's perhaps they had a lot of inexperience last time, with the exception of maybe Jordan Rhodes, or Tim Krul as well, I guess, to an extent. Um, how important is, is experience in the championship, you? And how important is it to have those players that have the know-how in the division? I think you need a good mixture of both. Um, and I think any, any manager or head coach will tell you um, it, the experienced players in that dressing room uh, are, are key. They're vital, to be fair. Um, and, and if you look back when, when in my last season, you know, we had people like Malky, Flem, Gary Holt, Hux. Um, we, we had some really, really good experienced lads who had been there, who had seen it, who had done it, who had played many, many years in, in that championship, who, who knew what that was about. Um, and they are key, um, especially if, if youngsters start losing their way a little bit, start thinking they're better than they are, then you want your older pros to make sure that they keep their feet on the floor. Um, and I, th I think Daniel has, that, has got that to work with, with. With the signings, they're all very young, you know, all quite inexperienced. But I, I do think Stuart Webber likes that type of signing because it gives them a chance to, to work, to coach, to nourish these, these youngsters in, in, into very, very good players. Uh, the Jordan Hugel one is, is, is a particularly interesting one for me. You know, he's a similar player to myself um, and a bit similar to, to myself, probably not quite good enough to, to play in the Premier League. But if you put him in the Championship, as he, as he proved um, at Preston, as he proved when he won a loan to QPR, he'll score goals. You know, big physical presence, strong in the air. Does this mean that Daniel's going to tinker and change with his system every now and then and, and play two up, two up top with Hugo and, 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 and Timu Puki? You know, that would be interesting. That would be a real um, going back to the 90s sort of strike partnership, if you like, because there's not too many teams that, that, that play with, with two up front. But no, interesting, interesting. I mean, then, I think the good thing is the, the club is in a good place uh, compared to when it was before um, the, the, the title winning season. You know, I expected the club to be in the championship for, for a good few season, seasons, if I'm totally honest with you. Um, and I was delighted when, when, when they won the league. Um, financially, in a much better place now. Um, don't have to sell players, as Chris alluded to. You know, it's, if, if they don't get the figure that, that they've put on the player's head, it doesn't go anywhere, which, which they, have, they have to be like that. They, they can't sell players on the cheap because no one, no one does any, anymore. 
So, you know, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about the majority of, of the signings because you, you can Google as much as you like, but can you only read so much in, into that? After that? I haven't seen too many of them of them play. Oliver Skip, I think he's, he's a tidy player. You know, he's been brought up at a very, very good club. But they're, they're all very, very young lads who, who are learning their trade. Mm, just, just on Hugo, do you, do you see him being someone who could play a similar role, I guess, to, to what Jordan Rose did a couple of years ago, where he might not score 15, 20 goals in, in the same way Timmy Puki might, but the six or, or seven that he does score will be crucial to turning draws into wins or, or losses into draws. I, I, I think I'm, I saw somewhere yesterday a fee of £2 million. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not too sure. I was reading stuff on social media um, and I think he's on quite a big wage uh, at West Ham. I mean, whatever you pay for, for, for the centre-forward this, this day and age, and if, especially maybe not as much in, in the Premier League, but in the Championship, you want more than seven goals. But it all depends if you're playing, Connor, do you know what I mean? Mm. If, if you're having to make do with a place on the bench and... and Starting the odd game and coming off the bench with 15, 20 minutes to go, you know, it, it is hard to have an impact on, on the game. But if he's, if he's going to be starting regularly, then he's going to be looking you know, at least 15 goals this season. So if you, can, if you can add his 15 goals to what hopefully Timo's going to reproduce the form that, that he showed two years ago, then winning ways out ahead, I think. Let's, let's hope so. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you both uh, a final question. It's quite a, a big question, I guess. So uh, feel free to, to take your time in terms of answering it. Chris, I'm, I'm going to come to you so you and get to a bit more thinking time. But in terms <laughs> of you. advice to, to everyone at the club, Daniel Farker, the, the player, I mean, we, 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 we can probably class ourselves now as experienced championship viewers. Um, that's, that's probably a, a fair comment to make. What, what do you think Norwich City need to do this season in order to have the campaign that, that many people hope that they can do? I think it's, it's, it's just, in some ways, it's forgetting about last season. It's forgetting anything about the Premier League because, you know, you're not Premier League players anymore. And I, I made this point earlier on. I think if you come down from the Premier League believing, well, that's where we belong, you, you're going to get stung. The, the, the Championship is full of teams and players who thought they were going to have long careers in the Premier League. Yeah, I, look at, I always think of, of clubs like Nottingham Forest, who I don't think have been in the Premier League since 1999, which seems absolutely extraordinary. You have got no divine right to get up there. In some ways, as Norwich fans, we've been fortunate because we've seen that team go up and up so many times. They've just never made it stick, which has been really frustrating. But if you, if you start believing your own publicity too soon, if you don't knuckle down and you know, make yourself determined to get to grips with the Championship... It's a division that is ruthless and it will it'll bite you on the backside very quickly. So I would say just watch the Premier League on telly, watch Match of the Day on a Saturday night, but don't think about it too deeply. You're, you're not there anymore. But you concentrate on the championship. Embrace being a championship team or you, you're going to have quite a difficult time. No, it leads to another example. I mean, they've obviously yeah. just, just won promotion, but mm -hmm. another team that got caught down there for, for a number of years. You and your final thoughts, your, your advice aside, as someone who, who have, has achieved promotion from this division. I just love that phrase that Chris you uh, knuckle down. You know, get your heads down, um, get get back to, to winning ways. Um, and what what they've got to realise is there's a whole city, a whole county here that's fully behind them. You know, and uh, I don't think the 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 crowd turned. It, I mean, it was hard obviously after the restart because there was no one watching the game. But you know the, the games I I went to the, the games that I saw on 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 TV I don't think the the, the crowd down at Carrow turned on the players whatsoever because they knew it was going to be a tough season. I think there will be an expectancy now. I think they have to take that pressure of expectancy level of Norwich being there or thereabouts um, from from the start of the season on their shoulders. They have all that squad, apart from obviously the the new signings, the squad that that's there now. They they have tasted championship football before you know there's not going to be too many surprises to them because it's only you know 18 months since since they were there and and they've got to they've got to realize that they've got a great opportunity with with what they've got with the man that's in charge with the talent that they have with the the youth and the blend of youth and experience they've got in that in that team and in that squad 
they will be one of the favourites to to go up, and they've they've got to handle the pressure, and they've got to enjoy it. And as you as 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 you two have said, they've got they've got to go out there with a smile on their face, and that's a good thing for me that I've seen on on the club's Twitter feed this week. You've seen photos of the boys back in training. They've got smiles on their faces, which is good. You know, you don't want people moping about, feeling sorry for themselves. You know, go and express yourself. Go and go and show what you're about. Go and show that yeah, you, you might be in the championship now but you are a Premier League player. And whether it takes you 12 months or maybe six months and you get bought in January, then, then, then so be it. But just, just go and give it your all. Brilliant. I think, that, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're fine words to end on. Gents, thank you very much uh, for, your, for your time and your insight and your wisdom. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Of course, you can leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you listen to this on a podcast as well, make sure you leave us a review. Pinkin.com, the place to go. You can read both of these guys' uh, columns every week, uh, which is, uh, well, they're both excellent reads. So, um, so I'm, I'm sure that you'd, uh, you'd like to check them out before every game. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Cheers, Connor.